Okay, can everybody hear me and see the screen here? Let me know if you see the PowerPoint. Let me know if you can hear me. Again. So Edwin had a headset mentioned something earlier. He said, you know, you talk about conviction a lot. Didn't you talk about this last year? I talk about it all the time. I talk about conviction all the time. Uh, and it's one of these things where I almost don't think I could talk about it enough. And specifically when you're trading, you know, reminding yourself, again, the repetition day after day after day after day, what you're supposed to be doing, what you need to do, what are the qualities that you have to have as a trader to be successful? This is one of them. I truly, truly, truly believe this is one of them, and that's why it's good to talk about this. So for those of you that have heard me talk about conviction before, this is a good review. And for the people that are new in here today, it, it, it's good to hear it because it's important information. So let's get started. Let me know if you can hear me. No one said anything yet. And you can type here in the bottom of the round. Okay, good. All right, let's get started. Topic today is get conviction. Get conviction. And if you have it, you know what? It's just like anything else. You can't have enough of it. This is one of the reasons why it helps me to even do webinars like this for myself and seminars like this for myself and even teach the class myself because you cannot have too much conviction as a trader, as a person. It's like saying you have too much money, too much love. You can't. You can't. There's no such thing. You can never have too much conviction. Those of you that are here that know me, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh mm -hmm. LLC. If you'd like more information, you can always email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or info at thestockswish.com. I put a lot of videos on YouTube. I'm taping this right now, so if you miss any part of this or if anybody comes in late here, I see some people signing in now, you can go to YouTube and watch the video. So what is conviction? I clipped this yesterday. This is the BBBY. Can you believe this? This was last Thursday. Okay, now I didn't look at this to see what it's doing today, actually. But BBY, this was Thursday. Thursday a week ago, this is Wednesday yesterday, the move that BBY, BBBY had from the gap, the break here on the morning on the Thursday a week ago of 72, the stock almost went down, you know, almost went down $10, $7 plus in this move. Who would think that you could actually do a swing tree and follow a gap, follow a stock after a bar like this? When the bar closes like this, it's hard to think, gosh, could it even go any more? The answer is yes. Why? This is a damaging gap. And if you held some of this overnight, you made even more into the swing trade. How do you know to do something like this? How can you possibly do something like this? The conviction is in the gap, in the analysis, in the understanding, in reading the chart and understanding the gap. So this is conviction. This is an example of conviction. Anyone that would be in this trade and say, yes, I have conviction. It's going. It's going further. Even though the bar in the day dropped $3 plus, I know it's going further, and yet it does. And if you had conviction, you would have profited from this trade. So why do you need it? Well, you need conviction in order to trade on a high level. This has to be the goal. The goal is to trade on a high level. The goal is not to trade on a medium level. The goal isn't to trade on a small level. The goal is to trade on a high level. If you believe in the market, your strategy and your stock pick, you can trade in a very high level. Trading on a high level will have high level results. Trading on a weak, small, teeny weeny level guess what results you're going to have? You're not going to have big results. So on, on a very, very basic just understanding, if you are only trading on a basic level, you are, cannot expect high results from yourself. Now, everybody has different goals, but why wouldn't you want to have high results? You would. You would want to have great results. So why not learn what to do on a high level? You accomplish only what you believe you can. I think this is something important to point out. If you don't believe you can be successful, you won't be. If you believe you can, you have a chance. And this is in trading and the market and in anything you do in a career or in life, okay? You must believe in yourself. You are only going to accomplish what you believe that you can. 
A lot of people train and yet they don't believe in themselves. They don't believe in their ability to be able to be successful. That's insane to me. Why would you take this on, trading the market, if you didn't believe you could do it successfully? You must believe that you can do it successfully. It's you. It's you. It's you. And you need this thing, conviction. You need it for trading. You absolutely do. And in reference to trading, conviction is necessary because there's an element of risk involved in every trade. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Okay? There is an element of risk involved and it's never going away. As long as you trade from today for the rest of your life to all eternity, if you want to be part of the market, there's an element of risk involved and there always, always will be. How do you alleviate this monetary risk mentally, emotionally, and inside of yourself with the conviction? With, the, with, this, with this conviction, with what we're going to talk about today. This, this idea of having the conviction helps you get over that, get over that hump, which you have to do because this idea of risk, the element of risk is never going away. It's just, it's just not. If you press the button, you're risking money, whether it's a dollar or one dollar or a thousand dollars, it's never going away that you're not going to press the button and take risk. So you've got to get to the point where you can do everything you can to alleviate this emotionally and mentally. And part of that is helps with having the conviction. Let's talk a little bit about taking risks with money. How can you risk money in a trade if you do not have conviction? It just blows my mind. And yet people do this. How can you risk $50? How can you risk $100? How can you risk $200? How can you risk $500 or more? How? How could you ever, ever do this if you didn't have conviction? How do you ever get to the point as a trader that you are able to take risk without being in fear? How can you take risk confidently? Confidently. I am doing this. I know it's going to work. I believe in this. I have 100% conviction. How can you feel confident? Well, you can if you're in fear. Making a lot of money trading has to do with taking size. Not at the beginning, but eventually, because this is the goal. This is how you're going to do well. This is how you're going to make a lot. And if you cannot risk even $200 without being in fear, then how will you ever risk $500? If you can't risk $100 without being in fear, how will you risk $200? How will you ever make a lot of money in the market if you don't take risk? And I'm saying this because I'm, there's an assumption here. There's an assumption here that you're doing this for the, for the reason to profit, to make good money. Now, that could mean a living, it could mean part-time income, it could be long-term investments. I don't care what the reason is, but you're doing this to make money. Let's not fool ourselves here. Let's get realistic. You are trading because you're doing this to make money. And if you're doing this because you think it's fun, that adds to the benefit. Obviously, I love to trade. I think it's fun too, but make no mistake about it. The reason I'm doing this is to make money to profit, or I would not be doing it, okay? So you're doing it to make money. Now, I'm saying a lot. That a lot amount is varies from person to person. What I think is a lot is not what most people think is a lot and vice versa. But it's still more than you can make per hour trading that you can make in probably any other job that there is on the planet. Because even if you were a doctor and you got paid on surgeries, you still put in hours and hours and hours each week working and you don't have to do that trading. In an hour a day, and two hours a day, it could be done. You could put in your trades, walk away, and come back and take them out. There's not a lot of time investment in this when you're actually in the trades once you know what to do. So for the rate of return that you make per hour, this is a great living. Taking risks successfully comes from having conviction and knowing what that is and understanding and comprehending your strategy, which is what we're going to talk more about today. And we were talking about this even this morning. This idea of conviction, why is this so intense within me? Why, why am I so right on that? Why is the conviction so intense for me? Because I have such a high level of comprehension of what I'm doing. And that allows me to place risk and put my own money on the line and take the trades. The, the conviction I have allows me to do it and the high level of comprehension. And so therefore you must have it. You must have it if you want to do it. And the point I'm trying to make here is, I don't care if it's $50. If you are in fear risking $50 because you don't have comprehension, you're going to lose $50. And if you take 50 trades at $50, you're still losing. Okay, so you, you know, it's not about how much you even risk at the beginning. You've got to have the comprehension. You've got to understand it. And you have to have the conviction because a risk of $50 per trade after 10 trades starts to add up. All right? So it's important to get this out of the gate right from the beginning. So do you need conviction for your strategy? The answer is yes. It comes from the level of comprehension, the level of understanding. This was a chart of the GME. 
Again, I did this as a late, late play here in the afternoon. This was back on the 14th. You know, this is not a kamikaze play because the gap was great. The gap was good. It rallied a lot. But then it did this nice doji and broke here into the major reversal time and held after these shorts exited. And the fact is that it's the understanding. It's the understanding of the overall strategy here of the gap and how it worked on the day. It's the total comprehension and conviction I have in the fact that GME is still going to sell off. And I actually thought it was going to go to $34 on the day. It didn't. But it did have a nice move in here of a dollar. Okay. So do you need conviction for yourself? The answer is yes. Anything you set out in life that you want to do, that you want to accomplish as a goal, I, you should believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and have conviction in whatever you're doing. The Olympics is coming up. It's going to be here before you know it. I love watching the Olympics, even though the time zone is going to be quite different this year to watch it in Russia. You know, when you look at these Olympic athletes, you see how they train and everything they do to accomplish these goals and win these medals. It's, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. You have so much uh, respect for these people when you see what they've accomplished. How are they able to do that? They believe in themselves. They're confident. They have conviction in themselves and their own abilities to be successful in their individual sport. Okay? So it is important to have conviction, not just in the strategy, but in yourself as well. And this is something you can start to work on right away. Even if you don't know anything at all about gaps or anything at all about the strategy, you can start to work on having conviction in yourself right now, this second, in this, this lecture right now. And this is something you have to build on over time. And again, like I said at the beginning, you cannot have enough. You can't. So just keep building it. Training is just not a normal job. Normal jobs, you get up and you sign in and you get to work and you do your thing and whether you're tired or sick or had a fight with somebody or had a bad day or maybe you're not feeling great about yourself for whatever reason on the day. Maybe your girlfriend or your boyfriend broke up with you and you're feeling kind of crappy about yourself. It, you could still perform at your job and do your job and get your job done and you're not going to get fired. But training is not like that. It's not a normal job. You do have to be in that space. Preferably 24-7 while you're into the market, while you're trading, while you're live, while you're in a trade, where you feel good about yourself, where you are at a high level of confidence, where you are sharp, where your brain is working, where all the things within yourself are in balance. Feel good about yourself. Feel confident. Your mind is sharp. You have food in your stomach. You have a good night's sleep. You're paying attention. You're on. I call it you're on. So training is not a normal job because a normal job, you don't have to be like that all the time. And you still get paid. The other thing about training that's not a normal job is if you are not at your best, you will not only not get paid, you will actually lose. Now, there, everyone has to take losses some days in training. This is just part of it. Nothing works 100%. But obviously, you want to minimize those losses, and part of that means being in control. That self-control comes from being an awareness from yourself. And even if you get up in the day and you weren't in a total awareness that you were feeling sick, you, you can take one trade. The trade doesn't work. You say, you know what? I'm not feeling good today, and I'm not going to take another trade. You don't want to make it worse, okay? It's hard to be perfect every single solitary day. I understand that. It's hard to be in that high level every single day. I understand that. But you got to do it. You got to do your best to be in that place, to be in that balance. I mean, I'm pumping myself up before I get on the mic in the day, before I take my trades, before I'm getting ready. I'm, I'm reminding myself that I have to be focused. I'm reminding myself that I have to be alert. I'm reminding myself my brain has to be on. These are all things that you need to remember. So conviction and why you have to have it. You have to have it because if you want to make money in the market, you have to have it. You have to have it. Otherwise, if you tend to go into the market and you end up making money, it's going to come back where you're going to end up losing it. Say you go in and you take a trade. You have no idea why it worked or why you did it. You didn't have any conviction just to set it, boop, and you did it on a whim. And it worked and you made money. Chances are you're going to take another trade and another trade and another trade, and you'll lose the money you made in that one trade and then even more. For the consistency... The conviction has to be there. And this is where I think people miss the boat. It's the consistency that is challenging for people to see in the trading. Not, not making money. You can, you can get up and make money. In five days in a week, you get up and make money probably three or four out of five for one week. Can you do that for 52 weeks in a year? Probably not. A lot of people can. It's the consistency. Having the conviction in yourself and your strategy and the knowledge and the understanding and the comprehension of what you're doing, having that high level, okay, 
helps you have the consistency. And you've got to do this if you want to do it for a living. And you've got to do it even if you want to do it for a longer term investment because why the heck would you stay in the market as an investor, even if you had a regular job? Why would you stay as an investor and invest your money in the market and be a participant if you didn't see consistent results? It would be silly to do that. A lot of people do do that because they are just uh, out in left field, hoping on a wish and a dream and a prayer. It's not about that. It's about having the comprehension. I always like to use this picture. I've used it before in many webinars about the power of conviction. Again, it goes back to the risk. This mouse here is a great example of someone willing to take risk. He is a trader. He is prepared and willing to take the risk. He needs this cheese to feed himself and his family. It's either go for the cheese or he's going to starve and he could die and his family could die. I love this picture too, Dimitri. It's like one of these great pictures that just embodies everything about trading because you're never going to get away from the fact that there's a possibility that always exists that the trade may fail or the mousetrap might hit you on the head. He's prepared though. I mean, he's taken all precautions necessary by using the helmet. Now, you know, with the frictional force of gravity and everything else in the world, this mousetrap could be a heavy duty one here. If this goes and bashes in the head too much, the helmet may not protect him. He may get a bump, he may get a bruise, he might bleed. He's doing everything he can to protect himself. That's all that he can do. He has a plan of action. Do you see he is poised and ready to bounce? He's trying to get ready and he's working himself up for the conviction to get into the market, to get into the trade at 931. He's prepared, he's ready, he's prepared to take the risk. He knows the reward is real. Again, the reward must be real. Otherwise, why would you do this in the first place? And how do you even feel like the reward is even real? Well, this is, again, you have to have the conviction. I know if I take a trade I, that it's a good short and that I know that it's going to be worth my time to take this short because it's going to pay me. Otherwise, why even do it? If I don't believe I'm going to make money or be successful, why? Why take the chance of getting a bruise or bleeding on the head? I don't want to do that. I'd rather just go back to bed. You have to believe that it's going to be worth it. And in order to even believe it's going to be worth it, you have to even see, yes, I like the gap. Yes, it's a good gap. Yes, I see the target. The target is here. The target's two and a half dollars away. Okay, if I get in here, it's going to go here. Yes, this is going to be worth it. Yes, I know if I take 3,000 shares and it goes 50 cents, I'm going to make 1,500 bucks. It's worth it. You have to know, I believe this is worth it. I have 100% conviction it's worth it because I know that the chance I'm taking is worth the money that I'm going to make and therefore I'm going to do it. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to do my work but I also am going to have conviction. And this conviction helps you deflate the fear about the risk of getting hurt or losing because there's no getting around it. There's no getting around the idea that you are taking risk. He's never going to get that cheese without taking risk. Okay? At least not the cheese that's on the trap. If he happens to find a scrap around it that somebody dropped, great. That doesn't happen often in this household. Therefore, he has to do what he has to do to get the big cheese. So, you know, this is what the stock market is. It's a place for people who are willing to take risk to profit. And it is accessible to anyone. That's a great thing about trading. It's accessible to anyone from any walk of life to trade it. In fact, I just met uh, 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 two weeks ago, somebody new that was moving to my building. He hasn't moved in yet. I asked him what he did for a living. He asked me for what he you know, did for a living. He asked me what I did, and I told him. And he said, oh, he'd love to talk to me sometime about stocks. Guy has an amazing job, doesn't know anything about stocks in his life, and is interested. It doesn't matter what you do. You could be a plumber. You could be a CEO of a company. Everyone in the world has an opportunity to be able to trade the market. You could be smart. You could be dumb. You could be poor. You could be rich. You could live in the United States. You could live in China. It doesn't matter. It's accessible to anyone from any walk of life to trade it. So how do you get to that point where you can profit? Well, you've got to learn what to do. Do a lot of people make money in the market? The answer is yes. Yes. The answer is yes. But they know what to do. So how do they make it and why do they make it and can you do it and what do you need? Well, this conviction that we're talking about is one of the very special qualities that you need. It's not just in their strategy, it's in yourself as well. So you need focus. 
focus, 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 focus on the stock pick that you have in the day, focus on the entry price of your position, focus on the position sizing, focus on the gap, focus on the strategy, focus on what you're doing, focus on the market, 100% focus. I have coffee every morning when I get up before I train, the caffeine, all of this, it helps me keep me alert, it helps me focused. Whatever you're going to do, meditate, whatever I need to do to stay focused in the morning. Focus comes from information because if you don't know what the information is to focus on, how do you know what to focus on? You know, you may as well just turn on the TV then and watch one of the shows in the morning that's giving you stock picks. You know what to focus on from learning the information that teaches you what to focus on. Like my rating system where I'm rating the gaps. I'm focusing on this point, that point, this point, that point, this support, this resistance. I know what to do. This is what I'm teaching people. It's the information. Otherwise you tend to go around where you're like, oh, do I think this? Do I think that? Let me look at this website. Let me look at that person. Let me go in this trading room. Let me look on TV. Let me read a book. Let me read a magazine. Let me ask my friend. You don't know what to focus on if you don't know the information because you could focus on any one of a million things. How do you know what the right thing is? The right thing is always based on the information that's, that the chart is giving you in, in the price it's, it's technical analysis. I mean, this is how I trade. This is how I'm getting the information. That's how I knew the right things and the wrong things for BBY today. It's comprehension. Comprehension, which comes from learning. And again, the learning process, the understanding, helps your conviction so there's no downside. Not only does understanding something and having the high level of information help you make money or give you a better chance to make money than people that don't know what they're doing, it also helps you get the conviction, which, like I pointed out, you need to be confident in yourself, to take the risk, to dissuade yourself from falling down that black tunnel of emotional fear and total oblivion, which is a lot, a lot of people do. There's different levels of information. It's like I talk to people and they say, well, you know, do I really need to take a class. I've been reading these books. I've been training for 30 years. You know, there's so many different levels of information. Nobody starts out here. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. I've learned that nothing's impossible since I've begun trading the market. But it's low odds. Most people, okay, start out here and then they go here, and then they go here, and then they may come back to here. And they may go here, they may go here, and they may come back to here, they may come back to here. There's levels of information, okay? This is what it's all about. Your, your goal is to have a high level of information, to be at the top where all the money is that you could ever think or wish or want to make in the world. So the idea is to continually climb the ladder of the level of information because you want to be in a high level. The goal has to be in a high level of information. You're, you're doing this to make money, okay, but the money's up here. I'm not saying you won't make any money as you go through each level, but here's where the big money is. Again, if this is what you're doing this for, if this is the reason you're doing this, you want to get to that point. How do you do that? Continually working yourself up to the higher level of information. I mean, I, I see this even within myself. I've had the business for a year, more than that now, and I've been teaching people. I had a high level of information to even figure out the stuff I figured out. Then I started increasing my level of information teaching people, because then I was seeing things as I was talking that just were coming out of my mouth. Now I'm running a trading room, and I've been doing it for over a year, and I'm seeing things every day that I probably would have never seen if I hadn't been running a room. You know, and, and every second, every day, every month, every week, every year, my level of information is going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. You never get to the point where you know everything unless you never make a mistake, and that's not true for anyone. So even, even once you get to the point where you're making money and doing well, like I am now, you, you still always are continually Increasing the level of confidence, increasing your level of conviction, and allowing the market to speak to you and tell you a more high level of information. The higher the level of information, the better chance of success, the more money you're going to make, the more intelligently you can talk as you comprehend what's going on. And then when a trade fails, you don't hate yourself.
You don't hate the market. You don't fall off a cliff with losses in the day. You don't quit. You don't give up. You don't change strategies. You don't jump from options to features to thing to thing to thing to forex. You don't not take the trade the next day. You don't be in fear. You don't lower your risk. You don't do crazy things. You say, you know what? I have such a high level of comprehension of what happened here today. I know exactly what happened here today. And therefore, well, I'm going to learn from this situation. If there's anything to learn, if there's nothing to learn, I just realized what happened. And therefore, I'm going to get up tomorrow and just trade back to normal. So all of this helps you go up each step. And this is lots of things. This is books. This is classes. This is trading live with real money, by the way. Uh, this is practice. This is analyzing your trades. This is, you know, being in a trading room like being here. I mean, this is everything. This is all of it. You are continually getting to higher levels of information, doing everything. I wish I could say to you, well, if you just do this one thing, then you'll know everything. But that's not true. If you just trade and get gain real life experience, you'll learn everything you need to know. That's false. You will need a mentor. You will need to talk things through with people. You will need guidance. You will need a trading room. You will need a class. You, you will need it all. Why? Because there's so much that the market has to offer and teach people. It's, it's just one of these things where there is a high level of information required to make the money, and therefore it's going to be a combination of all the things that you need. But the more you have, the better that you do. So you, never, you can never fault yourself with, for going over your trades too much or trading and following things and being in the room every day or, or taking multiple classes. There's, there's no such thing as having too much information. There's, there's just no such thing. There's no such thing. High levels of information will take you to the money. Most people get exhausted and think they know everything and it's still not working and then they want to quit and go on to something else. Chances are not only do they not know everything, they don't even know 50% of what they need to know. And that's why, you know, you've got to keep pressing on if you really want to do this. So, you know, it does take courage to trade and the courage is to press the button at the right time. Like some of these trades, I mean, we do in the morning. By golly, it takes courage. It's exciting when they hit. It's exciting when you're up money. It's exciting to be up a lot of money really quickly. I know it's still exciting for me today. You hear me scream and jump and yell and cheer in the room. It's never not going to be exciting. <laughs> it, that's what makes it so great to trade. To be able to press the button at 931 and have a comma trade in three minutes, in five minutes, in ten minutes is never not going to be exciting. It doesn't matter how how many years I do this, it's never not going to be exciting. It is always going to be exciting because there's no career on the planet that I can make that kind of money in that quick of a time. It takes courage to do it, but it is so, so, so worth it. And it helps my own level of conviction. Here's an example of the shield trade that was from last week, pressing the button at the right time. Is this aggressive? Yes. The stock closed the night before up here at 42.50, opened the next morning down here at $38. Look, look at the size of this gap. Does it take confidence? Does it take eviction? Does it take courage to press the button right here and take this trade? Yes. Did it pay? Yes. Yes, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. And this is what's exciting and fun to trade. But here it is, right here, this. So, you know, who is able to do this and profit and make this money? Who? People that are meant to trade for a living. People that are meant to make a lot of money in the market. People that deserve it 100%. People that have confidence. People that have conviction. People that want guarantees, that don't want to learn, that don't want to even go the extra distance that they have to, don't deserve this kind of money this quickly. And people that want to do what is required and what is necessary deserve it. Deserve it 100%. Okay? The market is made to pay people that are willing to take risk. You don't take risk on trades like this unless you have a high level of comprehension and understanding, which I do, and that's what I'm teaching people. Understanding the gap rate's over 20 points. Understanding the stock is weak. Understanding the fact that this is down a lot and it's still going to work. Understanding what's happening even here in the first minute of the day. Understanding the price. Everything that's happening here in the chart. All of this helps you trade and make money. And if you're able to do this, you deserve it. And the market pays people that are willing to go the extra distance, that are willing to, to, to do it, to go the distance. You know, we, I think we get into these situations in our lives and we think, gosh, it's just impossible, it's impossible, it's impossible. No, it's not. No, it's not. 
you know, all you have to do is rent, rent a movie, rent some inspirational story, or go out and buy a book, or even look on the internet or things, fabulous things, amazing things that are happening in this world. There's lots of people that are doing amazing and inspirational things in this world. I know that when we're caught up too much in our own lives, and particularly if you turn on the news, I mean, you turn on the local news nowadays, all you hear is negative, negative, terrible stories, shootings and killings and murders and crazy things. Yeah, that happens out there in the universe, and you do have to be aware of the world that we live in, but there are many inspirational, positive things that people are doing all over the world on any given day of the week and any given minute. And you've got to remind yourself of that. When you feel challenged, like you need the courage to do something, to go the extra mile, to go the extra distance, having uh, inspirational stories or, or reading books or watching movies about things like that helps you, helps you to gain conviction and confidence that you can do it as a human being. Because if one person can do it, another person can do it. You know, I, I in the last month, I moved to New York. It was a, a goal of mine, a dream of mine to come back to New York City and to live in an amazing area, an amazing apartment. I've accomplished that. And I said, you know, let, let the, the, what I've had, what I've experienced, what I've accomplished, let me be an example this year to people. I'm a regular person. Now, I'm a very smart girl and a hard worker, too, but I'm still a regular person. I'm only one woman, and I figured it out myself. So I'm an inspiration for regular people to be able to do this, although I knew that a high level of information was required, and that's why in the morning I look at 26 things to rate my gut. I understand that that high level of focus and information is required to get the conviction and to get the trades and to get it right. Uh, Dimitri is saying it's such a downer what watching the news. Yeah, sometimes it's just too much. Sometimes it's just too much and you have to turn it off. It's going to be aware of things that are happening in the world, but sometimes it's just too much. And you want to be inspired. And sometimes you have to go to the fictional world to then be inspired, books and movies. Because sometimes you can't find stuff, you know, on the internet or, you know, on television at the moment that you need that inspiration. It's better if you have someone to talk to. And this is why I open up myself for people to call me and talk to me. If you want to be inspired, call me. You know, if I ever have the time to write a book, I'll write my story. I don't know if I'll ever have time, uh, you know, but someday I probably will. It's an inspirational story about how I made it. And those people that know me know that. So how do you get from here to there? How do you get from here to there? How do you get from the point where you're like, gosh, how do I, how do, I do this? How do I get from point A to point B? And how much time will it take? How much time will it take to get conviction in your trading? How much time will it take to get conviction in yourself? How much time will it take to get conviction in a trading strategy? Is it going to take a month, a week, a year, six years, 30 years? 30 years. Someone said I was talking to the other day said they've been trading for 30 years. I thought to myself, golly, golly, 30 years. 30 years. If you're trading for 30 years and don't have conviction in yourself or a strategy, stop. Regroup. And get some healing, okay? You have got to get conviction in what you're doing. And if you don't have it, stop risking money in the market. Because all you're doing is throwing it into a lump where other people are taking it from you. Your money is better spent on a class than the market if you don't have conviction in what you're doing. Take a thousand classes rather than trading live if you don't have conviction in what you're doing until you take a class and get conviction in something you learn from someone that it's a high level of information to do the strategy. People don't want to take classes because they think it's a waste of money. They'd rather train, and yet all they're doing is losing. If you are training and losing for years and years and years and years and years and years, stop. It's insanity times 10, okay? It really starts to add up. Now, I started doing this at the end of 2008. It's 2014 now. So it's like over five years I'm doing this. But I'm flabbergasted sometimes when I talk to people how long they've been trading and losing. Flabbergasted. Part of being in balance is taking a step back sometimes and saying, wait a minute. This is not supposed to be like this. I have to figure something else out. Okay? And so you... Stop, and then you figure something else out. And sometimes that's exploration, exploration of a new trading strategy. Like, for example, what I'm doing in gaps. If you've never traded gaps before, sometimes it's exploring it. 
and doing the class and seeing if it's for you, okay? So you really, really, really have to think about where you're at with your trading. Now, if you're new, if you're brand, 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 brand new and you never traded before in your life, it's going to depend on how much work you do while you're in that learning curve at the beginning, understanding candlesticks, price, charts, all of that stuff. You're going to have to do some extra work to ramp yourself up if you want to learn it quick. Some people learn things very quickly, comprehend things very well, very easily, and some people it takes longer. But I mean, you get to a point where some people are just doing this for years and something's wrong. I mean, you know, a lot of it is sometimes people will do one thing for a year and quit, do another thing for a year and they quit, do another thing for six months and quit, do another thing, do another thing, do another thing. They never gain conviction in anything. You know, you have to regroup and think about this. So how much time will it take? I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't have to take a lot of time, though. That much I know. You know, I remember when I was starting out and somebody said, oh, you know, it's going to take this much, this much time, this much time, this much time. And I said, no, it's not. And really, at the beginning, I always believed it would happen very quickly. When I look back, I think, gosh, you know, maybe I risked too much at the beginning. But my belief system that it would happen quickly for me was not incorrect. And the fact that I believed it would happen quickly for me drove me to throw myself into the market and teach myself what I did. So if I didn't believe it was going to happen fast, it may have taken me 10 years. Do you know what I'm saying? Because by throwing myself into the market full throttle, with real money, by the way, I forced myself to learn this stuff at a high information. So I don't regret the fact that my belief system was that it was going to happen quick for me. It's just that I wish that I had had more of a mentorship at the time to put in the right direction. I really didn't. Because every place I turned, everything I looked at, everything I read, everything that was out there about gaps wasn't, was, was not good enough. In fact, it was pieces of crap. It was just absolute crap, okay? And so I had to make it up myself through the market and seeing what the market was doing in the gaps themselves and figure it out. So it was, it was, it was hard. But the thing is that my belief system about the fact that it didn't have to take me long helped me get to the high level of information. And if you have a mentor, someone like me, to help you bring you to that high level of information, listen to the things I say, watch the videos, do the class, listen to everything I say every day in the room. I'm telling you stuff. you got to listen. You know, this is good, people. These things I said, the th stuff I said today about BBY, that stuff I talked about today about BBY was worth something. And I hope you heard what I said. You know, the thing is that it doesn't have to take that long. But you've got to listen and you've got to focus and you have to take it seriously. You know, it's like this time continuum, this thing about the market. The market opens at 9.30 and closes at 4 o'clock. But it's almost like the market is like always there, seven days a week, 24-7. Once you get into it, once you're into the market, it's like it's just part of you. It's part of your life. It's in your blood. It's in your cells. It's like... I took two weeks off. I didn't trade. I moved and it was holidays. Went back to trading. Boop, it was right back and it was like I just traded the day before. You know, the funny thing is about the market, it's like this time continuum. Time like almost doesn't even have any, uh, it's like the market and time is like all just one big flow. Even though there is a time when the market stops, okay, and there is a time when the market opens and the market isn't open on the weekends. It's like once you get into the groove of the flow of the market, it's like just part of you. It's like just one big time continuum. So try not to be too specific with the time goals you have for yourself because I can't be certain how long it's going to take you to make it if it's going to be short or long. But the idea of, you know, not it not taking forever and the idea of you being able to do it sooner rather than later is a positive idea and something that you should work towards, all right? You have to balance that out with the amount of money that you have and you're risking, though, okay? Because everybody comes from a different place and has a different amount of money. So if you have a certain strict level of funds, you got to make that money last until you learn it. And you have to be smart enough to be aware of that. So is it just luck? Is it just luck The people that are successful, the people that do it, the people that get it? Are some people just lucky? Are the people making money trading just lucky? They're the lucky ones, those lucky ducks. Are they just really hard workers? Are some people just lucky and some are just not? You know, you know, you know people like that. Like it's like every time you talk to them, something else happened, and you're like, you almost like think that they're attracting like terrible things to happen to them all the time, like another drama. It's a like constant drama with some people. 
What is the difference between one person who's making money trading and one person that is not? What is the difference? Is it luck? Is it hard work? What is it? It's, it's not luck. It's not luck at all. It's you. Okay? It's you. It's you. You're the one. You're the one that makes this happen. You're the one that has the conviction. It's, it's, it's this thing. And, and you've got to be able to trust it. It is something you can learn. How do you know you're right? How, how do you know the difference between a feeling that is a correct guide or a feeling that is incorrect or feel fearful? It's you. It is ultimately you. This understanding within yourself of what that feels like. Because you are the one who's creating your own luck. Dimitri is saying the power of intention. Yeah, all of that stuff. I never read the book, The Alchemist, Dimitri, but here I'll plop it in the room for people. Here's a book. I don't know if anyone's read this that Dimitri is suggesting. So, you know, you're the one that makes it happen. You can say that you feel lucky sometimes. Sometimes we get these gaps, they run off the planet right away in the morning and say, gosh, you know, I feel really lucky. But really, I was the one that made it happen. I was the one that took the trade. I was the one that pressed the button. I was the one that rated the gap. And I was the one that knew what the right thing was to do and had the conviction and pressed the trade and took the risk. Okay? So sometimes you feel lucky, but in the end, you're the one that's creating it. You're the one that's doing it. And that's why you don't trade when there's nothing good. When there's nothing good to do, when there isn't any good gaps, then you just don't trade. You don't take anything, okay? You make it happen. I make it happen. I'm the one that's a power of my own life. I'm the one that's making it happen. I'm the one that's getting up in the market and making money. And I'm the one that's deciding when I don't, when I want to stop. If I take a trade, it doesn't work. If I take two trades, it doesn't work. And I say, no, 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 I'm stopping. I'm up for the month. I'm up for the week. I'm done. I'm the one that makes it happen. And you make it happen for yourself, too. It, it doesn't matter that it's related to money. This could be applied to anything. I just was talking about the Olympics. It's the same thing. These athletes that play in the Olympics, they're the ones that make it happen, okay? And the same thing as Super Bowl's coming up, okay? The people that are on those teams that are playing in, the, in, the, in this weekend in the sports in the Super Bowl, they're the ones that make it happen. You make it happen. You make it happen no matter what. It doesn't have to necessarily always be about money. So if you look at it as an overall bigger picture of you trying to accomplish large goals in your life, that goal could be anything. It could be uh, being at the height of your career, at a high level of your career, whatever it is. It could be making a lot of money, but it doesn't have to be, okay? It could be uh, you making it happen, meaning that you uh, have wonderful relationships with people, that you, that you say, you know what, my goal in life is to have an amazing family, I want to have great kids, be a wonderful mother, a wonderful father. You're the one that makes it happen. Or if you want to look good, or if you want to lose weight, or if you want to get into shape, or be the best person you can be, all of these things, it doesn't have to be about money. We talk so much about money in relationship to trading. But either way, whether it's a non-monetary goal or a monetary goal, you're always the one that makes it happen. You got to understand that people so often want to blame the market. Oh, this market! I can't believe it did it to me. Oh, this market! I hate this market. I can't stand it. That kind of attitude isn't going to make anything happen because you're giving your power away to what? To some outside source like the market, which has nothing to do with you. It's just doing this thing. It's just doing whatever it does. You, you are the one that makes it happen. You press the button. You take the trade. Or you don't. And you've got to learn from the right people. You know, and why is it that sometimes people have such a hard time about making decisions about classes? Because sometimes people have gone and taken classes from people that weren't the right people to learn from. They either didn't learn anything or learned information that was incorrect. And then guess what happens? Then people start to have a negative attitude about what? About classes, about education, about learning, about the market. You can't have a negative attitude just because you took one class and you didn't learn enough from it. That's like saying if you fall, fall in love with somebody, you're never going to fall in love again. That's crazy. You're missing out on life when you don't take classes with good information to help teach you to trade away money. And you're missing out on life when you don't fall in love with the next person you meet that's great just because the last person you went out with hurt you. Okay? This is all about, again, taking risks. Is it risk to fall in love? Yes. Is it risk to trade the market? Yes. Is it risk to take a class? Yes. But this is life. If you're not willing to take a risk in life, then you may as well just dig a hole and lie in it, okay? 
Life is meant to be lived, and part of that means taking risk. I'm not talking about bungee jumping off the 60-story building that I live on, okay? I'm talking about allowing yourself to feel, to live, to express yourself, to learn, to get better at doing something, giving yourself a shot, giving yourself a chance. Some people don't even want to put themselves into the ring, okay? They don't even want to give themselves a shot at being good or successful. You're not even going to take the class to learn the information. You're not even giving yourself a shot. Give yourself a shot. You don't even want to go out and date with someone or fall in love or make love to someone that you're dating. You're not even giving yourself a shot to get it, fall in love with someone. you got to give yourself a chance. Okay? You have to give yourself a chance. Part of this has to do with learning to trust yourself. If you cannot trust yourself, who can you trust? If you cannot trust yourself, who can trust you? If you can't trust yourself, do you think anyone else is going to trust you? I wouldn't trust you if you don't trust yourself. If you don't trust yourself, then I'm not trusting you either. And no one would. If you do not trust yourself, how can you risk any money in the market? And yet, and yet, millions of people do it day after day after day. In fact, one of the biggest reasons that people lose money in the market is, number one, they don't know what they're doing. Okay. But number two, really, the most important thing is that people are in fear. People are in fear. A lack of trust is nothing but fear. People are in fear. People lose the market because they're in fear. People lose the market because they're in fear. They don't trust themselves. And what is that? It's a reflection of a fear-based mentality. That's all that it is. People don't know what they're doing, and they're in fear. It's, it's really fear. If you don't trust yourself, you're in fear. You're afraid of yourself. You don't trust yourself. I'm afraid I'm not going to make good decisions. What should I do? What should I say? I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. I don't trust myself. I don't trust my decisions. What do you think? What do you think? Let me go ask this person. What do you think? Should I go in here? Let me look at this book here. Let me go on the television. Should I take this class? What do you think? Let me ask my friend. Let me ask my mom. Let me ask my dad. Let me ask my brother. Let me ask this guy here, the stranger. I don't even know. I'm. <laughs> You're going to go out in the street. I might as well go down to 42nd Street and take a survey of 100 people then and then let them decide my fate in the market. No, you have to trust yourself. You have to trust yourself. You have to trust yourself with the choices and the decisions that you make. And if you're in fear, then you won't. You may as well just go take a survey and take the majority rule then of the number of people on 42nd Street right now and just go with whatever the majority of those people say and see what your results are. You may as well just throw money down the toilet. Okay? You have to trust yourself. This idea of fear and the demons in trading is all just something that you've got to get over. And how are you going to get over that? The conviction. Having the conviction and the overall understanding of what you're doing helps you get around this idea of the fear. Because like I said earlier, you're never going to get past the risk. The risk is there. I wish you could say, well, you could trade without risk. Go ahead, do it. It doesn't matter if you have a little bit of money. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of money. Even people that have gobs and gobs and gobs of money, they don't want to lose either. Just because you can afford to lose doesn't mean you want to lose. Just because you afford to lose doesn't mean you're not in fear of losing. You could take people. I have talked to people that are wealthy, 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 wealthy people that are in so much fear about investing in the market or even in a class. They don't belong in the market then. They've got to get out of that. So it, you, could be, you could be successful and poor if you're not in fear, more so than someone that's rich and in fear. Because that person that's rich and in fear will not do well in the market and eventually probably will end up losing their wealth because they're in so much fear about money. So much fear about money that something will happen. Mark my words. You've got to get out of this idea of this fear about taking the risk. Okay? It's the only way to make it. The conviction helps. How to get the conviction? The comprehension. How to get the comprehension? Learning the information. The information has to be on a high level. Over time, your confidence grows. Your conviction grows. And at the beginning, when you're starting out, you risk small amounts. So it lessens the fear so that you don't have to be so focused on the money. But at some point, at some point, you're going to have to get to the point where you get over it. And at some point, you're going to have to face it understanding what's going on, everything I'm explaining to you right now, understanding how your mind works, how your emotions work, understanding, getting this is going to help you, once again, the comprehension, get past this point to get through it, to work through it. You're either going to give yourself a chance, throw yourself into the ring to give yourself a chance to make it over the hump, or you're not. Okay? So you've got to learn to trust yourself. You've got to learn to trust the market, and you have to learn to trust life. Okay? This is the world that we live in.
This is, this is part of it. You have to learn to trust the process of life. It's really not that hard. Once you start to get into a flow, it's amazing how things happen. Does it mean there's never a problem that comes up? No. Problems come up. Problems come up all the time. Unexpected things happen every day. It's how you deal with it that makes a difference. That's what sets the successful people in life apart from the unsuccessful people. And that, that thing that I have is what I'm trying to teach people, that mentality. Tom calls it a warrior in me, that I'm a warrior. Uh, you know, that I always want to win, that I never want to lose, that warrior mentality that I'm never giving up, that's helped me make it. I think people don't have enough of that. Maybe I have too much of it. But I think that, that can, you can learn that, okay, that you just 100% without a shadow of a doubt believe that you will be successful. It has to be no questions asked. Because if you think there's a chance you're going to lose or fail, you will. Okay, if there's even one ounce of the chance that you think you're going to lose or fail, you will. We, we actually do create our own circumstances by our belief systems. So if you believe that you're going to fail, chances are you will. So how does conviction help you make money? Conviction helps you make money because it alleviates the fear. Anything that can pull you out of that fear-based mentality will help you focus on the information in the price points of the gaps to trade. So when you trade with conviction, you alleviate the fear. And when you start to trade without fear, you will learn to trust yourself. And when you start to trust yourself more, you're going to make better decisions. And as you start to make better decisions, you're going to make even more better decisions. As you start to make better decisions, you make more money. As you make more money, you feel more confident. As you feel more confident, you have more conviction. And you're, you're, there you go. And every level you're getting up. Boop, boop, doop, 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 and you're going up the levels like I showed earlier. And it just continues. It just continues and continues and continues. And that's why if you get on the right path in a year, in two years, three years, four years, five years, you're making, not only are you making the money that you want to make, you're making more than you want to make. When you started at the beginning, it was hard for you to see, but you stayed on the path and you did whatever you needed to do. So it's really about trusting yourself. You've got to trust yourself. You've got to let go of the past. You've had situations in the past that have not worked out for you, whether it's market related or not. Move forward and be in discernment and stop second-guessing yourself. Stop waiting and waiting and waiting for guarantees. We were talking about this earlier, too. Uh, someone was asking me about this, about in reference to trading, you know. I can tell sometimes, not all the time, but a lot, when I talk to people that are not meant to trade. Any person that wants a guarantee from me is not meant to trade the market. Any person that wants a guarantee from anyone is not meant to trade the market. There is no such thing, and that's not what the market is about. You must be willing to take risk if you want to trade. And if you can't even take the risk to take a class, then you have no business taking any risk in the, any trade in the market. Because taking a class is not risky, okay? Trading is, is risky. And that's why you have to have a plan of action and know what to do, and you have to have stops, okay? So this isn't for everyone. But you've got to know that. You've got to trust yourself. You've got to be able to be honest with yourself and find out. You've got to give yourself a chance. If you think it's for you, go for it. Maybe you'll find that it is. Maybe you'll find out it isn't. But if you don't try, you'll never know. How will you ever know if you don't try? You will never know if you don't try. You'll never know if you don't try. You have to try. If you try then you might make it, okay? At least you'll find out. It takes courage to trade the stock market. It takes courage to risk your own money in the market. I'm not going to lie to you. It takes courage for me to do it. It takes courage for you to do it. I don't care if it's $50 or $500 risk a trade. It takes courage. It takes courage to learn something new like a gap strategy, which is what I do. And it takes courage to realize that you need to learn what to do in order to be successful. That takes courage. Even listening to everything I'm saying today, which I'm saying some bold things here to people, it takes courage to realize that you need to learn what to do in order to be successful. Okay? It does take courage. It takes courage to face yourself. To face yourself and say, am I ready for this? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready for it. I mean, I'm always ready for anything, okay? And some of you here are too. Some of you need to think about things. Think about it. Think about it for a little bit, but don't think about it too long. I have people that have been following me for over a year. 
maybe they'll follow me for another year. It's crazy, okay? You've got to be able to be in discernment and make decisions to move forward with your life. If you're living in the past, it's not good for you in reference to your career, and it's not good for you in reference to your personal life, okay? It's just, it's just not good for anyone. So you've got to be able to trust yourself. Let's look here at some of these trades here. I want to look at this SCSS. This was last week. And the reason why I picked this as an example to talk about today, you know, uh, today was more of a, uh, a lecture about conviction, okay, and just an overall getting, getting into that space with yourself where you're starting to think about choices that you're making in your trading. So, but I did want to go over one, one example here today, which was the SCSS from last week, because some people did this and did not retake it. And the first trade in this failed. It failed. Why did I stick with it? Why did I stick with it? The gap was good. The gap worked. Okay? It was a good gap. The conviction allowed me to retake the trade. As it turns out, it ended up working. I ended up making money on the day. Now, when you find yourself in a trade and you take the trade and it fails, you have two options. You can retake it once after the second, after the first trade, or you can even give yourself three trades in it. I think no one should be taking more than three trades in anything. So, for example, you take the first trade if it fails, you take the second trade if it fails, you take the third trade if it fails, do not redo the trade. It doesn't mean you go long if you're short or short if you're long. It means you stop for the day. Something's not right. Either the gap isn't working or you're off on the day. In an ideal world, the first trade works, which many times happens, or the second trade. But I know a lot of people didn't redo this last week, and so I wanted to go over it because it was a good gap, okay? I hope everyone can see here that this is a good gap, and obviously you know now it worked, and I wanted to point out here how this broke. Now, why did this go to some bigger number on the day? Who knows? Why did it take so long to get going? Who knows? But it doesn't matter. The fact is it worked, and if you didn't have conviction, you didn't retake it. And if you ran this for a swing trade, look what happened. It actually went over the number. It actually went over 18, settled down, and went and broke the next day in. This is all happening while the market actually gapped up in here in the last few days and made new highs. So you see the weakness here in this overall chart. Again, it takes conviction to be in this even as a swing trade or a core trade to get this down to the bigger number. Why? Because it went over the high of the gap. But this isn't the first gap. There was a gap back here. There was many gaps in this. So you can't expect this necessarily to close uh, to hold over the high. So here was the one minute. Stock ran down, and I did an entry in here and put the stop over here, which, by the way, I felt that it should have held or I wouldn't have put the stop here, but it didn't work. Here's where I lost, lost in the trade. Booped over here, and I got stopped out. I'm down. Now, I ended up retaking it, and this is what I wanted to go over because it takes conviction to go back into a trade after it fails. And by the way, this failed after 10. That's not exactly ideal. This is like right around the cusp, okay? Because typically I want trades to go on to work and work before 10. As it turns out, this did set up after 10 then for the second trade. And here's the five minute. Five minute entry was here. This is, this is me getting stopped out. And then it settled down again. Sometimes trades will do things like this, but it doesn't mean that it's failed on the day. Why? Because it does this one boop here. It goes, don't and then it goes on to work. This is people getting stopped out, it's not buying. Usually in one hard bar like that, that's what happens. The stock didn't end up going down and breaking the low of the day then eventually. Here you can see it. It did it into the two o'clock period where it broke the low. So it was worth retaking. And if you'd stopped for the day, you would have been down, it's better to make money. How are you able to do this? Conviction, conviction, the overall understanding of the gap and the gap analysis. So the entry time with this was late. This is the second trade now. This is the one that worked. Entry price is $17.90. You can take half size. Here's another thing to do. Take the first trade if it fails. Take the first trade full size. If it fails, take the second trade half size. And if the second trade fails, then you're only down one and a half. Okay? Stop was in. Ad prices actually had an ad. So you had a chance to do an ad. And lower the stop. Sometimes you get this, sometimes you don't. And then you can take your full position size. And this isn't even the low of the day. Really, the target was 17 for the first target, and it got near it. And again, this is a very, very late trade. So this is an early exit on this. It actually got down to 88, 1688. But still, the trade paid. So you're down 1R from the first trade. You make 2.5 
from the second trade. What is your profit on the day? 1.5 Rs. That's better than losing. And this teaches you self-control. This here teaches you self-control. Whether you go back in and it's one or a half on the second trade, or lower the stop and do the ad, it, this teaches you self-control. And this is, again, part of understanding how to get good as a trader, part of learning what to do, uh, part of knowing yourself, part of trusting yourself. If you don't retake this, maybe it's because you don't have conviction in the gap, or maybe you just don't have conviction in yourself. And this is why we're talking about this today. You've got to have conviction in the gap, and you've got to have conviction in yourself. And actually, you do need both, okay? If you think you're going to run out of control like a crazy person, if you take a second trade in something where the first trade fails, then the problem is with you, not with the gap. And you've got to go back to the information. Go back to the information. Get out of the emotions of it. Go back to the level of information, the high level of information that you learned from the rating system from the gap strategy. So you can get out of the emotional, okay? If you actually lose conviction in the gap, let's just say it's not that you're in a fear-based mentality about retaking it. It's you're not in an emotional state. You actually lost conviction in the gap. Let's just say it went over the high of the day or something or swooshed up. That's a different story, okay? Then you go back, review your information, see if there really was something wrong there, see if there was something you missed, and make a determination. You refer to the information. You go back to the information. You go back to the class. You go back to the points. You go back to the gap. You go back to the price. You look at the price, okay? I think a lot of people, though, when they have trouble retaking trades, it's because of the fear based of the first trade and being down, being down on the day. So, the way to get around this is maybe half size. Half size after the first trade. Half size the first trade if you don't want to be aggressive full size. And then if the first trade goes on to work, then you're just making less than you normally would. Okay? So here's the 15 minute with this, where this hit on through in the 15 minute, and you can see where it broke the low. This is into, this is the day of the gap here on the six. Here was the boop up on the one and the five. Here's what it looked like in the 15. Here's where it broke on down. Here's what rallied up and set up here into this 12 o'clock major reversal time and fell on through and broke into 2 o'clock. Again, 12 o'clock major reversal time, 2 o'clock major reversal time, stock goes down. And actually hit the low of the day here into 2 o'clock. Never broke a new low here into 3. But it did get down and broke 17 in the 16 80s. All right? So lots of times if somebody doesn't work on the aggressive trades in the morning on those small time frames, you can flip to the 15 minute. Flip to the five minute. Do half size and half size if you want to. It's still better making one and a half hours of the day than taking a loss. And it's going to help you get out of that fear-based mentality of doing a retake. Because this isn't a perfect world that we live in. This is the market. And sometimes you will have to retake trades. If you can't stand it, if you don't want to do it, then you need to ask yourself why. Is it the lack of conviction in yourself? You don't trust yourself, your decision makings? Are you in fear about money or losses? Or is it the gap? Did you not understand something? If you don't, then we got to go over it. All right? Here, here this JCP, this, this was really conviction tested here. This was so, so, so hard this day. This was back here first week in January, too. I held this thing. Again, this didn't work right away. Was down in this before it went on to work, before I made money in it. It was so hard because it didn't break into the close. I was literally in this trade until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So hard to stick with it. Took so long to get paid until it dropped. First trade didn't work. It took forever to go, and then it worked. And then the real move happened here a couple days after. But this was conviction tested, really conviction tested about whether to, because you could have been, you could have taken the second trade, and then you could have actually killed it. You could have killed the second trade with a loss or killed the second trade break even because it took forever to get paid. The second trade didn't fail, but it, it took forever. It was hours until you got paid on this after the first one failed. So, you know, again, conviction tested. What do you refer to? Go back to the gap. Rate the gap. Refer to the gap. Go to the gap. Go to the chart. Look at the gap. Go to the level of information. Get out of the fear. Okay? We'd all rather than make money than lose. Sometimes you have to decide that you're just going to take the loss. Why? Because the gap doesn't work on the day. Like BBY did not work today. And sometimes you have to say, wait a minute, this is a failure. But you have to be able to recognize what a failure is when something is really working, and you have to just be patient. And every once in a while, you have to be patient with stuff. 
So who is responsible for your success when you get up in the morning and train and make money? Who? Who is responsible for your success? It's you. You are. You're responsible for your own success. I'm responsible for my own success. And you're responsible for the choices you make to get to that point. If being a successful trader was just all about hard work, everyone who worked hard would be successful, but they are not. If being successful as a trader was just about having a lot of money, everyone that had a lot of money would make money trading, but they're not. You could be stinking rich and still be losing in the market. It's not about having a lot of money. You do not need a lot of money to make money trading. You don't. And even if you have a lot of money, it doesn't mean you're going to be successful. You can go a longer distance. But not necessarily if you risk too much at the beginning. You might still be taken out of the game if you've got a lot of money. Because you might damage yourself so badly that you can't go on. So it's never about that. It's about the knowledge and the information and a high level of information at that. Success in trading comes from having a solid strategy, the support of a good trading room, like I offer people, and not only that, conviction in yourself. So important, so important. Success and successful results in your trading is a combination of many things, which we talked about today. Your own personal conviction in yourself, your strategy, and the market is what drives that success. Success requires a good strategy, a good course that teaches you quality information like the Golden Gap course to help you pick what stock to trade and focus on it. And success also requires hard work to learn the information and put it to good use. Because you can take the class, but if you're not going to trade and put it to good use, well, what's the point? You've got to learn it and trade. Ultimately, however, the main energy and fire behind everything you do with your trading is your own personal conviction in yourself. And this is the one thing. This is the one, one thing. If you truly believe in yourself and your ability to be all successful, you're going to make it. And if you don't, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, no matter how long you trade, 30 years, you can do it. You, you're going to fail. If you don't believe in yourself and that you can do it, you will not be successful. Okay? So you got to start from that, which is building the own personal conviction in yourself. It's about the power of your own conviction. The power of conviction is really just tapping into the power within you. You are the one with the power. You are so powerful. You have the power within yourself to follow a disciplined trading plan, make money in the market, which is available to you every day, and learn a strategy that works. You can control your destiny by making a choice not to allow anything to stand in the way of your trading success. You've got to be able to make your own choice not to allow anything to stand in your way. Not, not the internet, not your platform going off one day, not a gap failing one day, not one day of losses, not talking to someone that's your friend that starts to be negative about the market, you, about taking one bad trading class you did five years ago, you didn't get any results from, and now you want to not do a class again. You, you can't let things stand in the way of your trading success. And anything that you allow to do that will ultimately do exactly that. Okay? So... You could actually make an excuse for any reason that you're not making it. You could say, well, I'm not making it because of this. I'm not making it because of this. I'm not making it because of this. Say whatever you want. It's all excuses. It's baloney. Ultimately, you have to trust yourself. I don't know if anything I said today makes sense to you. I don't know if you believe that conviction works, but, but, it, but it does. Ask yourself if the words I said today are resonating any truth within your mind. You've got to get clear. It's about trusting yourself and getting complete clarity and focus. There is no such thing as too high level of information in trading and reading price. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as too much conviction in yourself and your belief system and your level of confidence. You must trust yourself. You must trust your instincts. And part of having conviction is trusting yourself and the market. Let this webinar be the first step towards thinking about trusting yourself. Okay? And you've got to trust the words I'm saying. And not only that, you have to trust me as a teacher. Interesting thing is there is a lot of people that are here, um, the people that are here right now that are in the room with me every day that do trust me, that implicitly trust me and take my trades and sometimes even take the gaps before they even set up because they trust my gap picks. You know, it, 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 you, know you really do have to trust the person that's your teacher. Trust that I'm going to lead you down a road that's going to lead you to the right path. The right path is past the success, to be a successful trader, to really be a successful trader, and to not be a loser. I don't want anyone to be a loser. If you decide you want to be a loser, then I can't help you. But if you decide you want to be a winner, I will do everything I can to teach you and mentor you and help you. 
So the QQQs, you know, really, it is about trusting yourself. When, when, when the market did this in here, I thought, gosh, you know, for some reason, I felt the market was going to come in. It did. This was a great call I made. The market was going to fall in for a short-term pull-in, and it did, meaning that this buy setup here wasn't going to hold, which it didn't. And then it lifted off and immediately gapped up, and we're on our way. It's about trusting what you see. I trusted what I saw. I said, no, we're coming in. And we did. And then I trusted what I saw again. I said, wait a minute. It's 100% retracement. It's far. We're higher. We're higher. We're going to break over the higher. And we did it the next day. So trust yourself. The market is in real time. Things change. Things move. Trust your reading. Yes, I read it. Yes, I see it. Okay, I see it. Yes, I see it. Read it. Trust yourself. 2014 is really about conviction. Having 100% conviction in what you do, in your strategy, and everything. You've got to learn to get this right. You need a plan of action. You need a plan of action in trading in order to be successful. And you need a proven strategy and a system that works in order to make money trading. You absolutely must follow this plan to achieve success. So it's about a plan of action, and you've got to be patient with yourself. It's just like when you have a child, you have to be patient with that child. The ultimate reward is money, but really it's also to be happy. You want to be happy, happy with yourself, happy with what you do, happy with what you do for a living. And actually, I have to get the door. <laughs> Someone's ringing here. Hi, hang on one second, everybody. And then I'll come back and answer questions. Just give me one minute here. I have to ring the bell. I don't know who it is. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So anyways, for those of you that are here that have done the GAP course, you've done it already, and I'm re redoing it this weekend if you want to retake it. Those of you that want to retake the class, if you feel that's going to help you with your conviction, you've already done it, retake it. And those of you that haven't, it's a two-day course that had a strategically fine pick and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Retakes are free. The class is online. And it's this weekend. I know there's football this weekend, and I don't know the times of the games. But uh, the Eagles are out, so I'm really not rooting for anybody specific. Uh, but the class is 9 to 5 Eastern Time. The cost is $24.99. And if you're interested in signing up, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. And anybody, again, that's here that's already done it, if you want to retake it to help you with your conviction, great. <laughs> Edwin is rooting for the Patriots. They always win, though. They've been in, like, 7,000 Super Bowls. That's the thing. It would have been great to see the Eagles be in it. That was a good game. I, I even watched that game where they lost. It was sad. Are oh, the Patriots are your team? Yeah. So if anyone's interested in the gap class this weekend, new students, you can sign up until Friday. Tomorrow is the last day there to sign up. I'm also doing the trends course next week if anybody wants to sign up for that. January 22nd and 23rd from 1 to 5. And I'm doing a special for new people that sign up for the uh, class for the Golden Gap class for January. I'm offering 50% off the Trends class. If you want to do both classes in January for everything. And the Trends class is very important to read overall trends and charts. Like BBY. The stuff I was talking about in BBY today, so important to see in an overall bigger picture time frame of trends. So thank you very much for coming. My voice held out here. My voice is definitely getting better. So let's go over questions. Anybody have any questions on anything at all today that I went over anything? Your college roommate is a big Eagles fan as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
head went. <laughs> all right, does anyone have any questions about anything so far today? Anything at all about the lecture? Anything about gaps? Anything about the discussion I was having here about conviction? February 2nd, what, Brett? For what? The, the, the gap class is January 18th and 19th, which is this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. The trends class is next week, January 22nd and 23rd, Wednesday and Thursday. You lost me, Brett, about February 2nd. I'm doing a, a live lecture here actually in my building in person in Manhattan for free on February uh, 16th. Is that what you mean? I don't know which one you mean. Uh, no, Dimitri, but you can email me and I can send you referrals. I started working on the website last year and got busy and then moved to New York and never finished working on the site. I've hired a person, someone to do the site and even paid them. And I have so many different ideas and graphics for the site. I ended up being the holidays and I moved and I didn't finish the site. So my, my number one goal for this year is to get the site up and done by the spring now that I'm finally moved to New York. But I'm still not situated here yet. I'm still not unpacked. It's probably going to be another good two weeks till I'm unpacked and situated here in the apartment. Once that's done, I'm going to focus on the site. But if you would like referrals, you can email me, Dimitri, and I will send you referrals to contact people directly. That's what I would do. Here's my email again. Once I have the site up, I will have a testimonial page. You know, I, I said it before, and some of you are in here, I've had some really good students who have been wonderful to talk to people about their experiences in the class and trading. Uh, you know, people have been great. And I find that people in this industry, when you talk to people and get referrals, are very honest. You know, a, you know, most people have done more than one class in their lifetime. So then when they take a course where they feel like they're happy with it, it they, they, they can give a good experience, uh, you know, looking at something else that they did in the past. And specifically people that are trading with me that have been doing the trades. You know, we're seeing the gaps work. Is anybody in anything right now? Anybody want me to look at anything? Any questions from anyone at all? You're welcome. You're welcome, Dimitri. Okay, great. All right, well, everybody in the training room, I will see you back in here bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. from 8 to 12. I will see you tomorrow morning. We'll see what we get. I can put the top picks in the room for tomorrow. We'll watch the ones tonight. I don't know if INTC is going to gap down, but that's a watch. And then tomorrow morning, we'll GE. We'll see if it gaps down. You're welcome. All right, everybody. Have a great day. I hope that was motivational for you guys and girls. And I will see you tomorrow on Friday. Today feels like Friday, but it's not. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Email me if you need anything. And email me if you're interested in the class to retake it, or if you want to sign up for the class as a new person, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Anytime this afternoon, Brett, you can call me. Okay, great. All right, have a good one, everyone. Talk to you then.